Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and for newcomers, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like how the late Stan Lee was. For this particular footage, I am going to do something new to everybody watching. I'm going to introduce a story of a character, and then I'll show you a notable data sheet that would help you understand one of the characters in the uh, storyline introductory. I just figured that it would be comprehensible on your guys' behalf, so bear with me. So for this storyline is a character named Cheer. And if you guys can bear with me and try to go along with it, I hope you guys would enjoy the storyline and such. Just try your best to um, follow along. Cheer, number one, the beginning. Created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames, October 11, 2015. To begin this story, we start traveling across New York City until we find ourselves in the gymnasium of a local high school, where we see a senior cheerleader doing her stuff in a basketball game. This story is particularly about her. Her name is Clarice Hall. She has bright green eyes, wavy strawberry blonde hair in a short bob, and is dressed in a black and orange cheerleader uniform. After she and her friends were done doing their work, Clarice took a seemingly nerdy girl to a hallway and started slapping and torturing her. In case you didn't know yet, the nerdy girl is Shannon Murray, the future Colossa. While Clarice was beating her up, Shannon screamed in pain and fear, helping the staff track her down and rescue her by suspending Clarice from graduation. <sighs> you shall pay for us, you genetic freak show, Clarice announced to Shannon as she got taken out of the school. Meanwhile, back in her suburban home, Clarice was having thoughts of hatred and, re and revenge upon those who tried to stop her. When she got tired, she took her favorite cheerleading trophy and slept in her uniform with it. However, we start realizing that Neuron, the evil stepsister of the Master, arrived to capture Clarice. When she woke up, Clarice screamed at the sight of her captor as Neuron sprayed a stream of chloroform onto her face and took her from her home. Six years later, we see Neuron in her laboratory as she uses her mentally constructed arms to hold on to three test tubes with a red liquid in each of them. Finally, after getting these DNA samples from the heroes Colossa, Spawn, and Split, I shall finally create my new weapon to defeat Colossa, along with anyone who tries to stop me. She crawled in her spider-like platform towards a containment chamber that held Clarice in a coma, along with keeping her from aging. Now, Neuron, time to infuse Clarice with the samples, she said to herself. She then placed the samples into a large syringe and injected it into Clarice's left jugular vein. After a moment, a monitor showed the transformation was complete. Now, Clarice, you are my latest weapon of destruction. From this day, you shall be named Cheer. And as she said that, she used her mind power to brainwash Cheer. After she awoke, she stood up from her chamber and walked out of the lab. Master, my bitter enemy, eat your heart out, Noron finally stated with a sense of accomplishment. Meanwhile, at Murray Tower, Colossa was watching some TV until the local news station announced breaking news. A massive cheerleader has come to attack New York City. Please evacuate from your homes until the problem is solved by our heroes. As the station continued, Shannon paused the TV to get a better look at her. Wait a minute. Great. Clarice is back to ruin my life even more. She then turned off the TV and left the building to fight her. 
While cheer was rampaging across Manhattan, she found that her longtime enemy showed up to stop her. Well, if it isn't old nerd face. Long time no see, Shannon. Did you miss me? Clary said in a sarcastic tone. Cool it, Clarice. You've ruined my childhood with all that torment. Newsflash, Shannon. It was your parents that ruined your childhood. Don't you even say that, Colossa yelled as she fought her past enemy. However... Colossa found that Cheer has most of her powers, along with infinite duplication and some self-resurrection. After a while of struggling, Cheer throttled Shannon in the gut and slammed her onto a few buildings, leaving Neuron saying, Finally, Cheer, you have defeated your target. Luckily, while Shannon was lying in pain, she found that her grandmother, Goddess, used herself in the Alpha Gods, to fuse her with a new power. Before Clarice left the scene, she turned and saw that a beaten Colossa stood back up. I shall not have you win again, outcast, she said to her in rage. Well, what are you going to do, freak show? Cheer brutally stated. Shannon then started expanding to twice the size of her opponent as she developed massive muscles. As she was transforming, her clothes started ripping and popping until she was covered with only her white undergarments. After the change was complete, Cheer made a concerned face as Shannon finally yelled in a hyper-masculine voice, Ultra Lassa, splatter your burrow. As Clarice, as Clarice tried to escape, Ultra Lassa jumped to her and beated her foe into a bloody pulp. As she got her nailed to the ground, Ultra Lassa projected a beam of nuclear energy from her mouth and onto her face, instantly disabling the brainwashing. While Neuron was struggling nearby, she yelled out, No! No! Please stay as my servant! And as Cheer got back her senses, she got up and targeted her captor. You've brainwashed me. You should think twice before controlling me, she yelled as she finally stomped on top of Neuron, knocking her out cold. Since then, Cheer had marked herself as both a part-time villain and a part-time cheerleader. Since she still considers Colossus as a nerd, Clarice would do all in her power to decimate her swornest enemy. The end. For this next thing that I'm going to introduce is a different aspect where it lacks in storyline design it makes up for in helping you understand the individual or organism and such for the villain neuron that you learned about who brainwashed cheer this is her data sheet and I'll try my best to keep it efficient and comprehensible for everyone watching neuron Real name, Professor Nina Bryans. Height, 9 feet. Weight, 3 tons, including platform. Status, villain, and universal genius. Base, default earth, and mobile. Intelligence, 5 brains, and 5 pluses. Which makes her one of the smartest individuals to date. Behavior, judgmental, insane, and persistent. She'd do whatever it takes to overpower and destroy her heroic stepsister. Extremely dangerous. In a universal quiz against Cosmic, she'd win with two questions to spare, among other examples. Weaknesses. If she focuses too hard, she will get a bad seizure. Powers. She's one of the smartest beings in the Leviathan universe. She can project cerebral constructs as extra limbs, a nuclear death beam, and can project foods and liquids without consuming it. She could hear the most silent of thoughts, can mentally pick up the heaviest of objects, and can brainwash people with ease. She recently crawls around on a unique spider-like platform. Eyes deep green, hair deep red and short. Origin. Nina Bryans is a stepsister of Professor Rachel Bryans, the intelligent master, despite that they never got along very well. While observing her stepsister on the local news station, 
Nina got so disgusted that she made a machine to grant her the brain power of every historical genius, with the side effect of having an oversized head. After she made another device to make her head more portable, Neuron immediately started attacking New York in hopes of destroying the Master. Learning about this, the Master got some assistance from the Lunarian Pym until the two heroes knocked her head off and tossed it back to her lab. And the Master vaporized her body for good measure. Back in her lab, however, Neuron regained consciousness and designed a metallic platform with spider-like legs. Since then, Naran would make any attempt to destroy her stepsister. She wears nothing, respectively, because she's mainly a, an oversized head on a platform, so there's not really any need. Teams, solitary, or with other villains. Original inspiration, brain power. And for the character that was in the storyline itself, Split, you could be able to find an illustration of her on my blog, which is interconnected with my podcast. And if you can't find it on your own, then you could just ask me to put a link onto the blog, and that would help you guys out in tracking the data down and such. I hope the data sheet for Neuron was efficient on your guys' behalf. And I hope you guys enjoyed all that you've learned from this video as of so far, and yet to come. And if you have anything else to ask and such, you could just, if you want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. It's all on you. And if you want to hear more stuff, you could just contact me in any way that you can, like in the best way possible on your guys' behalf. It's your choice, you know? And until next time, I'm Leviathan. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the previous videos I've done in the past and the ones that are yet to come. It's all on you. And until next time, in transmission.